All right, let's quickly review how to graph a linear function when we're given standard form. So here we have 5x minus 3y equals 12. We're more familiar graphing linear functions in slope-intercept form, so let's turn this into slope-intercept form by solving for y. So what's happening to y? It's being multiplied by negative 3, and then we're combining it with 5x. So to undo this equation, we're going to subtract 5x and then divide by negative 3. And when we do that, what we get is y equals 5 thirds x minus 4. Here we have our slope, and here we have our y-intercept. So we can plot this point. Our y-intercept is negative 4, so we go down here to y equals negative 4, and we can plot that point. Now let's take a look at our slope. How is our y changing? Our y is increasing by 5, and our x is increasing by 3. So let's increase y by 5. Go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then increase x by 3. 1, 2, 3. Following the slope leads you to your second point. And all we need are two points to define a line, so we can use a straight edge and graph our line. So there we have a review of how to plot, or I'm sorry, how to graph a linear function. So let's try another one. 2x plus 3y equals 9. Let's take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can solve that for y to put this equation in slope-intercept form. All right, let's see how you did. y times 3 plus 2x. To undo this, we'd subtract 2x and then divide by 3. And then when you do that, what you get is y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 3. So we can plot our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is 3, so we can plot that point. And then we can find our change in y and our change in x y is decreasing by 2 and x is increasing by 3. So we could decrease y by 2, 1, 2, then increase y by 3. One, I'm sorry, we could decrease y by 2, 1, 2, we could increase x by 3, 1, 2, 3. There we go. And sure enough, that leads us to a second point, but if you notice, this point is already plotted because it's a point on the other line. So we can plot, uh, or we can graph that line, and now we have graphed two linear functions where we started in standard form and we used slope-intercept form to uh, graph our, our functions. So, what do these functions have in common? Do you notice anything? I hope you do. They've got this point in common right here. And that point is 3 comma 1, all right, or just 3, 1. So what does that mean? What is this? What is this common point to these two functions? Well, it is a point or a solution that both functions share. So let's test this out. If we plug x, if we plug 3 in for x and 1 in for y to the first function, what we get is a true statement, 9 equals 9. If we plug those same values into the same variables into the second function, we get another true statement, 12 equals 12. And so what we can discover here is the solution to a system of equations is the point of intersection. And what that means is it is the set of values that make each equation in the system true. Let's try another one. Here are two equations. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and try graphing these two equations yourself. If you'd like a step-by-step -step procedure, it's right here. So first you should convert each equation to slope-intercept form then graph both functions and identify the point of intersection. And finally, because it's possible you could make a mistake, verify that the point of intersection is the solution to the system. And you can do this by plugging those values back into the system. That means both equations, not just one. You've got to verify both. So pause the video and see if you can accomplish this on your own. Pause the video now. All right, let's see how you did. So, let's take the first equation, turn it into slope-intercept form by solving for y, and what we get is y equals 5 thirds plus 4. And here we go, we've got our y-intercept, and now we can go up 5 and over 3. But the problem here is, if we go up 5, up 1, 2, 3, we, can, we cannot plot that point. So remember, right, if you can't go up 5, and over 3, what's another way of thinking about this fraction? A positive divided by a positive is a positive value. 
but also a negative divided by a negative is also a positive value. So instead of going, instead of increasing y by 5 and increasing x by 3, we could decrease y by 5 and decrease x by 3. Let's see if that works. So let's go down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then let's go back 3. 1, 2, 3. And what do we have? A second point. Now, if you have trouble understanding why this works, now that we've found a second point, let's see if we can use this slope to get to our first point. So our slope says to go up 5 and over 3, right? Increase y by 5, increase x by 3. So let's take this second point and do exactly that. Up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now let's increase x by 3. 1, 2, 3. And sure enough, we get to a point that is our y-intercept. So these two points are on a line with a slope of 5 thirds and a y-intercept of 4. So it all works out. Let's try the next one. 2x plus 3y equals negative 9. Solving for y, we get y equals negative 2 thirds minus 3. So our y-intercept is negative 3, 1, 2, 3. Let's plot that point, and let's use our slope to find a second point. So we're going to decrease y by 2 and increase x by 3. So decrease y by 2, 1, 2, and increase x by 3, 1, 2, 3. And we find our second point. Now if you notice, these two points seem like they might match up with this line. I'm sorry, with this point, making uh, a line. So when we when we graph that, sure enough, the two functions intersect here at negative 3, negative 1. And that is the solution to the system. Let's verify this by plugging in negative 3 uh, in for x and negative 1 in for y. Evaluating the left side gives us negative 12, and that equals negative 12. So we've verified that this solution works for this first function. And sure enough, when we plug it into this second function, we verify that it works there too. And that is how you solve a system of equations by graphing.